I got a new job and it feels like I'm in a nightmare. I spent almost seven years in property management before vowing to never, ever, ever go back. I don't know if it is just my local market or if it is like this everywhere. But in the course of working for several different companies I encountered everything from sexual discrimination, retaliation, and a whole host of other crazy, unacceptable things culminating in being fired by a manager because she thought I might try to take her job. After that, and my vow to get as far away from property management as possible, I was lucky enough to be offered a great job as a project manager at a local printing and direct mail company. I loved working there, not because I was on fire for the industry, but because I got to use problem-solving skills daily. I liked having a lot of interaction with various departments and co-workers. I got treated like a human being by everyone, and I didn't have to worry about any of the crazy shenanigans that seemed to plague my old field. Unfortunately, I was unlucky enough to be the last project manager hired before an extreme slowdown in their business, and after just shy of a year I was laid off. I was terrified when it happened. I had been unemployed for a stretch before that job, and my savings still hadn't recovered from that. The day I got laid off, I called a former manager of mine, one of the good ones, from my not so long ago property management days because she was always one of the most plugged in networkers in town. I was absolutely floored when, the very next day, she offered me a position as her assistant manager at a nice pay upgrade from what I had been making at the printing company job. Apparently they were about to move forward with a candidate and then I dropped in out of the sky. She told me that both account delinquency and the paperwork at the property were a mess and that she was in the process of retraining the residents. Apparently previous management had been, um, not good and the residents were running wild, but that it wasn't anything that I couldn't handle. Even though I really never wanted to go back to property management, I felt that I wasn't in a position to say no. And hey, I figured that maybe things would be different this time, and if not I could just do a good job for a year or so, save up a ton of money, and then move on to something I would enjoy. I went in legitimately filled with optimism. Well, I am 2 months and 19 days in, and I think I'm about to crack. It's a nice looking property in a nice area, but I legitimately wonder if this place is built on a native burial ground or perhaps a Helmuth. In the short amount of time that I've been here, I've experienced the following. 1. Been verbally assaulted by residents in what I would consider an extreme way four times, two of which resulted in me crying in the back room after they left. 2. Witnessed an unstable employee losing it, dramatically quitting and then coming back three times in one hour. 3. Discovered an employee running a sidecar repair business all day, every day at work instead of actually doing work for the company. 4. Been present when a dude high on meth and road rage followed my coworker onto property, and spent an hour chasing maintenance employees with a bat and trying to break into our front office. This is one of three times we have had to call the police since I've started. 5. Had a resident I had never spoken to before walk into our office, and then aggressively run up to my desk with no preamble and scream that I am a bitch from hell in a possessed sounding voice while throwing money orders for her late rent in my face. 6. Been questioned in an extensive and vaguely threatening way by what turned out to be an unmedicated paranoid schizophrenic resident about whether or not I am of God before he left the office, had a full meltdown, and had to be handcuffed by the police and taken in for psychiatric observation. 7. Been present for the hit and run of a maintenance man driving the company golf cart on property, he is okay. 8. Had a non-resident family that was crashing our pool refuse to leave and instruct their children to poop in the pool after we asked them to go, yes, they pooped. 9. Discovered that a convicted murderer somehow got through our criminal screening process, and now runs a large number of sketchy illegal occupants, who may have something to do with a number of car break-ins and acts of vandalism that have recently occurred on property, in and out of his apartment. All of that is in addition to two apartment fires, buildings being struck by lightning, a host of just plain weird natural phenomena, and everyone here acts like this is all very normal. But it seems like a lot for under three months. I've never worked anywhere that has had a comparable volume of this sort of stuff happening. And as far as rest of the job goes, well, I cleaned up the account delinquency pretty quickly and have largely done good things. But frankly the training has been inadequate, and I'm repeatedly being assigned numerous impossible tasks deadlines, which I hate. I'm also extremely isolated, as the front office only has three other employees and there's this weird dynamic because I'm under the manager but over the leasing consultants. Everyone is pleasant, but it's really stratified and it doesn't seem like that will change. I'm very unhappy. It's so bad that lately I find myself increasingly freezing and being unable to even complete simple, doable tasks, which really isn't like me. 
I have to give myself a pep talk just to get in the car and go to work. Also a new, not normal for me thing. I obviously can't just bail. And a big part of me feels like a terrible person for wanting to head for the hills already when my manager just brought me on in good faith, at a great salary. But the place itself is terrible, appears to be cursed and I don't enjoy the work. I honestly don't think I can make it a full year. When is the soonest I can start applying for new jobs without looking like a total flake to prospective employers? How do I explain the reasons why I want to leave my current job to prospective employers in a way that is honest but doesn't make me sound like a melodramatic crazy person? Because if I stay I'm pretty sure that I will be murdered or possibly swallowed by the sinkhole that is inevitably going to drag that place to some netherworld. Hell dimension. Also, I would like to be given projects that are challenging but not unrealistic is clearly not the way to go. And finally, if I find a good, non-property management job, how do I leave without upsetting my manager, who will almost definitely feel personally betrayed? I've worked with her before, and I've seen her get touchy about things like this with employees at other properties. The person before me left the place in a shambles, and she moved me into that slot because she knows I'm trustworthy and loyal. I know she's expecting me to be in it for the long haul. An update from the Helmuth. Many non-property management applications are now out and circulating in the wild, mostly for HR jobs. We've had to call the police twice since my letter was posted. First $3,000 worth of equipment was stolen. Then someone tore the doors off of the garage where our AC units are stored and sliced them up to steal the copper from them. While trying to have lunch outside this week I have had, on different days, things thrown at me by a squirrel, been attacked by a yellow jacket while tiny jumping spiders simultaneously jumped onto me, and also had large rando bugs that maybe were some sort of shield. Stink bugs drop into my lap from out of nowhere. So yeah, it's basically more of the same. The newest work challenge is mistakes being made in the system for the month by me because the manager left out key steps when training me on how to do certain tasks last month. Manager, however, says that I should have known to go and do these, never discussed, counterintuitive, no way to know about them, steps and that I need to be more careful because she can't carry my weight. I tried to address the knownness of this with her, as well as the fact that many of the projects, or the deadlines for them, that are being assigned to me are actually impossible for anyone to complete. But the basic gist of her response was that I was just going to have to do better, be perfect and also be ready to take on more tasks. Additionally, she is doing things like telling me that I need to complete a set of tasks by EOD on 11 over 1, which was also the date and time listed in the shared Outlook calendar appointment, reminder that she personally set, and then telling me mid-morning on 10 31st that the tasks should have been finished no later than that same morning and that I had been aware of that. Uh, no. So, you know, not the most positive update, but hey, I'm actively out and looking. Update, there is a new sticky situation on the Helmuth. Last night I got a text message from my manager at about 7.30, after the working day was done, asking for a favor from me. She has decided that she wants to write up one of our leasing consultants and wants me to compile a list of everything I have ever seen that could be a write-up able offense. She wants me to include stuff from over a month ago or more that the manager knew about but did not address at the time. The reason for this sudden mission is that the consultant put in a request for time off in our system a week ago, and when the request wasn't denied she assumed she was good to go and did not come in for the two days she had requested off. My manager did not contact her on the days she was not in although she did privately fume that not denying was not the same as approving, and did not say anything to her about the time off when she returned to work yesterday. However, she is telling me that she is planning to write her up, possibly twice, today. I seriously don't want to be a part of this. I'm not saying that there are not issues to address with my coworker, but nothing has ever been addressed with her previously, period. And going straight to two write-ups, the company has a three strikes policy, without ever even speaking to her about literally anything seems horrible. She asked me if I thought would bounce afterwards, and it sounded like that's what she's hoping for. Any tips on how I can minimize being tied up in this? Update. As I write this update, a faulty fire panel in our filing room, far from my desk, is sounding an office-wide alarm, and I am tasked with shutting it off while doing, well, work. It's too loud to just let it go, but manually silencing it only yields 1 minute and 30 seconds of silence before it starts up again, so getting any work done is challenging. 
Additionally, there is currently a wasp situation in the office. I had to decline going alone into the woods next to the property with an irate resident with a Unabomber vibe who wanted to show me the specific individual squirrel that he claims was harassing him two years ago and has returned in order to vandalize his new vehicle. And I have also just discovered that my increasingly unhinged manager has placed a two-way microphone in my office by my desk. Yes, it's another glorious day on the Helmuth. I know that sounds kind of bleak, and I was going to wait until I had a happier new job. Yay. And my last day is Friday. Type update before writing. But I really didn't want to let the holidays pass without taking the opportunity to say thank you. Because, seriously, as bad as the above sounds, and yes, that is all from just today, I would not be coping as well as I am if it weren't for you in the ever-helpful commentariat. I know it's dumb, but having strangers on the internet be kind to me and offer me great advice, supportive statements, and also somehow reference all of my favorite TV shows really helped. Just hearing from an outside source that I wasn't crazy and it was okay to make moves to get out of this job filled me with so much relief, it really helped me feel less like a trapped animal and more like a human with choices, which has been priceless. For those commenters who said that my manager was not my friend, and that it also sounded like some really poor management was going down at my property, I'm sorry to report that you are all very, very right. My manager, it turns out, lies constantly, to everyone, about everything. She also refuses to address staff issues, has been trying to force us to spy on each other, and, since we're not doing that, has moved on to motion-activated cameras and secret microphones, and has been consistently ordering me to do or say certain things to co-workers or residents and then hanging me out to dry after I follow her instructions. I've never felt so unsupported in a job, or like I've taken so many crazy pills. And that's on top of a lot of other just bad management choices. For example, I learned that a temporary maintenance worker that she wants to hire on permanently has been watching hardcore pornographic videos on his phone with the volume turned way up while at work. Before I could tell my manager, she told me and my other female coworker that one of us would have to give him a ride, alone, to the office Christmas party. I pulled her aside to fill her in and explain that neither of us would be super comfortable giving him a ride in light of that information, and she became very angry with everyone except the porn-watching dude, who she still seems to be planning to hire on permanently. Not a good scene. However, I've been applying to new, non-property management jobs and am starting to at least see some movement, even if I haven't unlocked the shiny new job achievement yet. I had a really great phone interview last week for an entry-level HR position and I'm also playing phone tag with the local university regarding an admin position, so I'm hopeful that I won't be on the helmet forever. I've also been practicing giving my boss notice, so when that happy day comes I'll be ready to roll. Update, this week on the Helmuth, our internet has been out for two days, and our N&T reps have been completely non-responsive so we have no internet, phones, access to necessary software, or ability to do anything, including buzzing in prospective residents at the gate, or even know that they are there. It certainly made going to eviction court this morning fun and interesting. I needed to have ledgers sent to my personal email account so I could check them on my phone before heading to court early this morning. But my boss is too much of a control freak to let her boss at corporate send me anything directly. But she also isn't the greatest about knowing how to forward attachments or making sure that she's not sending me Excel spreadsheets instead of PDFs. Fun, lots of the usual craziness. A squirrel army has taken up residence in the roof and walls of one of the buildings, and the squirrel specialist keeps no showing. An entire family with acute bronchitis decided to come to a resident event and cough on all of us for an hour. How cute, you all came in your jammies. We are too sick to get dressed. The car of a person staying illegally in an apartment was hit by another person staying illegally in an apartment and screaming and attempted table flipping in our front office ensued. A tenant pretended to have a wasp allergy and a small child in order to get me to kill a wasp in his apartment for him, but forgot that he had previously pretended to speak no English the last time he came into the office in order to get out of paying late fees, and, well, lots of other stuff. However, the most notable Helmuth happenings surround my boss and two of my co-workers. Co-worker number one, who my boss was attempting to saddle with bogus write-ups to make her want to quit gave notice before said write-ups could happen. Instead of being happy about getting what she wanted, my boss instead had a sulking fit. I guess because she wanted to feel like she purposely made the notice happen and started targeting another employee. 
The sulking stopped as soon as she got a call from a friend of hers who manages a nearby property, though, apparently co-worker number one applied there, was declined, and she told my boss the specific reasons she was declined, which is very not cool, and also that co-worker number one asked them if they were hiring. You know that bit in the og the Grinch who stole Christmas, with the giant evil smile. That's exactly the expression that was on my boss face, because of course she felt the need to relay all of this horrible information to me. And yes, I still feel like I need to take a shower. She is actively planning to make finding a new apartment and employment difficult for coworker number one in the hopes that she won't be able to move off property, will be unable to pay rent, and will ultimately be evicted. My boss also saw coworker number two, who she really likes a lot, checking out a job search website. So of course she did the super logical thing. She told coworker number two that she needed him for a project, put him in her car, and drove him off property to some luncheon event that none of us knew about, and grilled him for an hour about why he was looking at the website, was he looking for another job, he denied that he was and gave her a plausible excuse that she bought, and so on. She later told me that this lunch excursion was a treat. My poor coworker privately referred to it as a kidnapping. My boss also told me that we needed to be extra nice to coworker number two and make sure he got lots of treats. She started doing things like, real example, making him, unasked for, cups of hot cocoa with whipped cream, sprinkles, and candy cane garnish. She hands them to him in front of the rest of us, who are not being given special cups of fancy cocoa, and it is really weirding him out. He privately told me that he has an interview elsewhere. I'm crossing my fingers for him. That's basically the highlights, or at least, what's at the top of my mind. Although I'm probably missing some stuff, even though it was one of the slower weeks I've had, there was still plenty of ridiculous to go around. Posted 57 minutes later, update, and someone stole my lunch. Update, welcome to the Helmuth update. In a shocking twist this week, there were no squirrel or stinging insect shenanigans. Huzzah. Although temp worker porn guy did report seeing rats by the fortress of garbage that has been stacked up around the dumpster, and being very frightened of them. My manager explained to him that he still needed to pick up in the areas where he saw the rats, and that rats never attack or bite people. She very firmly told him that he should ignore them and get to dismantling the fortress of garbage. Temp worker porn guy remained terrified so she finally instructed pest control dude to put out three minus four traps in amongst the garbage playground of rat delights and told temp worker porn guy to hop to it. It has not all been fun and rats. We had more worrying rising water levels in the ponds, a worrying emptying of the pool, another randomly broken pipe, yay, and the discovery that the roofs of at least two buildings are completely deteriorated and in a state that the roofer referred to as inexplicable. We also had a lot of screaming residents and an online review wherein my manager was listed by name and called a sociopath. I don't know if she's a sociopath, but something is definitely very wrong there. I think I've mentioned that I've worked for this boss previously. While she was a little bit difficult to work for, she had always appeared to be a good boss, which was one of the reasons why I took this job. Things are kind of spiraling with her now, though. Guys, I don't know what to do anymore. It seems like she always has to have someone that she is unhappy with, torturing. Now that her least favorite leasing consultant has quit, it looks like it is my turn in the barrel. She is clearly very unhappy with me this week but generally for pretty unreasonable things. For example, she will ask me to do a very complicated task hour long task, but then leave me by myself in the office for over an hour. I will be overwhelmed with phone calls and multiple people walking in for tours and will be unable to complete the task. I will explain how out of 75 minutes I was talking to or touring people for 65 minutes. She will tell me that is unacceptable. Three separate times this week she has asked me if I have done something that we talked about the night before or that she gave instructions on in a previous team meeting. In all three cases, the conversation or meeting that she referred to never happened. Like, nothing even close to it happened. And in one instance, she actually asked me if I had done a thing that she specifically told me not to do the previous day, repeatedly, because I kept asking her to be sure that was what she wanted, saying that she specifically told me to do it. I really don't know what to think. Is she gaslighting me? Is she crazy? Is she trying to set me up? I'm constantly upset and worn pretty thin at this point. She spent 2.5 hours interviewing this woman who lives at the property she was at before this one, and there were a lot of giggles and pointed whispers. Maybe she's hoping I will quit so she can replace me with her. Also, rent is due this week, so there have been many screaming residents. So many screaming residents. Mostly, they scream at me. Upon being told over the phone that I couldn't help him until he stopped screaming, one guy immediately ran to the office to try and corner me for more screaming, 
all of the fun. Fortunately, I took today off and have a fun, out-of-town nerdcation with the boyfriend planned. I'm going to try really hard not to think about work or the mean notes and rearrange desk I am going to come back to. Commenter replies, Domesticated rats are very gentle, intelligent creatures that do not typically bite people unless they are being hurt or threatened. Wild rats though, they definitely bite, and they will definitely attack people. Your boss is off the chain. Opus, yeah, I was listening to her tell the dude that the rats were timid and afraid of him, and he should just carry a water bottle to squirt them with, and to go and jump into the trash piles, and all I could think was new. In another comment thread, Anonymous calls to your municipality's code enforcement. Even just them showing up might be entertaining. But either way, start making a list of agencies to contact on your way out. OSHA, your housing authority, whatever agency handles discrimination against tenants, keep track of wage violations, etc. Set it up so you go out in a subtle, ongoing blaze of untraceable glory. Complain on behalf of wronged tenants, wronged employees, contractors, neighbors, squirrels, etc. Opus, the problem is that it's currently an office of three including my very paranoid boss, and I've now seen her go after co-workers and employees from her previous jobs that she suspects of doing her wrong in a number of ways, including but not limited to, lawsuits, anonymous complaints about them to their corporate offices, attempted setups, fake bad reviews naming them specifically online homemade glitter bombs mailed to them from other states, at least one instance of having someone's power cut off, etc. I also just this past week heard one rumor about something she attempted to do to someone while at her last job that is too wild to list when I can't verify it as fact. But on the off chance that it is true 100% seals the rock no boats deal for me on leaving. Jeez. Terrifying. Update. Another week. Another Helmuth update. I've been having a hard time unpacking. Winnowing down the list of everything that's happened this week, but I think if I break it down into just the daily highlights I can keep it coherent. Here goes nothing. Monday, I worked alone with my boss, which basically means that I worked alone. One me, almost 400 apartments filled with unhappy people, all of whom wanted to call and yell about rent on the first regular business day the office is open after late fees start charging. Roughly 20 walk-in tours, and a really bad upper respiratory infection that had me barely able to walk a few feet without wheezing and wanting to fall over and never get up again. Not my worst day on the helmet, all things considered. Tuesday, the boss has definitely decided it is my time in the barrel now that her least favorite leasing consultant has left. I was given a large number of extra tasks that she did not have time to do and was sent staggering off, still very visibly sick at this point, to run around and do them while she stayed inside and used the office kitchen to bake cookies for my coworker. I think they were chocolate chip, I wasn't offered any. I decided to have a lunch break not in my car, which proved to be a mistake when a spider, unbeknownst to me, crawled onto my water bottle, and then, when I picked up said water bottle to take a sip, jumped onto my face and bit me. On my face, I am never having lunch outside of my car again. This was also the day that my boss reminded us that new desks were showing up between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. the next day, and then suddenly had a freakout in the second part of the day about how we had to start packing everything now 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 now. When I asked about boxes, she dumped out a 6 inches by 6 inch box full of peppermints and told me to have at it. It held, maybe a quarter of the contents of one of my drawers. Then she spent two hours deep cleaning and organizing the already clean and organized back room in the most manic fashion possible. It kind of freaked us out. Wednesday, I came in to find that all desks, phones, and computers had been dismantled, except for mine. So I handled all of the phone calls and resident issues for the first half of the day since I was the only one who could. My boss spent more hours doing weird cleaning. She then announced that she was ordering pizza for the office, sausage on every pie, which I hate, sorry, sausage lovers, and got very angry when I opted to eat my packed lunch and take my usual lunch hour. As punishment I got to handle the office by myself while she shut everyone up in the conference room and called old employees of hers cocors for an hour. Honestly, I would have rather eaten with the face-biting spiders, so I am okay with my choices here. And now we come to the most dramatic and not okay event of the week. An enraged resident stormed into our office and angrily informed us of his intent to shoot any employee that even knocks on his door. You see, his wife put in a service request and maintenance came to fix it and he wanted us to know that even approaching his apartment would get us shot. He was very serious. He meant it. He expressed it directly to my manager and to the room at large. And then he went down to the maintenance shed and told all of the maintenance workers the same thing. To me, this is a big deal. To my coworker, this is a big deal. To my manager, not so much. 
Her solution is just to non-renew his lease, which is up at the end of September. She wasn't even going to tell maintenance what happened, but the dude went and threatened them after threatening us. Thursday, I caught my boss taking a picture of me and texting it to someone. It was not okay. I was too stunned to even know what to do at first, but after a few minutes I finally had the wherewithal to say um, boss, did you just take my picture and text it to someone? She then froze, and then said something about taking a picture of my office furniture setup and sending it to her boss, the regional VP, then gave way too much detail about what was in the picture and also listed things that COULD and have been in the picture because of where she was at when she took it. I also got sent out to an apartment where I discovered doors ripped off their hinges and a barbecue pit in the middle of the kitchen, but the picture thing kind of broke my brain and is taking up more space there right now. Friday, suck it, Helmuth. I have called in and am spending the whole day applying to more jobs and eating really tasty food and maybe renting movies. The whole day, booyah. And while I got a slightly heartbreaking rejection yesterday, the company that I am currently most interested in is allegedly contacting me next week about setting up an interview. If anyone out there wants to light a candle, say a prayer, sacrifice a goat for me, I would not mind. So yeah, that's my, believe it or not, very abbreviated week. Update, welcome to another recounting of yet another week on the Helmuth. Let's dive right in. This Monday I came in to find my desk and office furniture drastically rearranged, and the contents of every drawer reorganized. My post-it notes vanished, my poor snacks and tampons were violated yet again, and I no longer have a place where I can secure my purse and keys, which is kind of a thing I need, so not great. I guess I'll start locking my purse in my car and just always keeping my keys on me. Also, due to the new positioning of my desk and chair I cannot see anyone who is walking into the office. Like, a cyborg with flamethrower arms, that are aflame, could easily walk into the office and I would have no idea until the rounded towards my door. This is problematic for a number of reasons. Interestingly, the hidden camera, microphone combo has also vanished. I saw it in a jumble of wires in my manager's office. Has she given up? Has it been replaced with something better hidden and more discreet? No clue. I am proceeding with as much caution as I can muster. The rest of the week has kind of been a blur. My remaining leasing consultant is still being freaked out by all of the presents that my boss keeps showering him with. This week he got a pretty cool knit blazer with the company logo on it. The war on children has continued, as my boss is, selectively, enforcing a new rule where you must be 18 or older to be in the business center, computer room. Since a lot of kids use the business center to work on their homework there is an extra layer of meanness at play. My boss has also been insisting on letting some people pay rent without having to include fees while not extending that option to others, which is 1. Extremely not cool, 2. Is an FFH issue just waiting to bite all of us, and 3. Has been causing me a lot of stress. A new leasing consultant was hired, although my boss tried to hide the fact that she hired her for a few days, which was weird. We knew because Newbie kept calling to check on company policy and stuff while my boss was out of the office, but my boss, who did not know this, the woman seems very nice, although she also was a resident of my boss at a previous property, and they seem to be trying to cover up the fact that they know each other, our friends. She starts in two weeks. We also have had our regional VP with us since Wednesday. She held a meeting where she told us, among other things, that we are never allowed to use post-its and must instead utilize the single legal pad that she is going to allow us to have on our desks. I guess I'm going to have to get a doctor's note, since I have pretty severe ADHD and actually need to use post-its to stay organized and on track, that we need to do something to balance all of the negative. Reviews that have gone up name-checking my boss, lie and tell people that you need them to put up a positive review to help you win a contest if you have to. That I am required to pull and scrub delinquency reports no less than three times a week and she wants to see it happening more. And also that moving forward I will only have seven days to complete some very overwhelming recurring tasks that I used to have 30 days to complete. Fun stuff. And because it wouldn't be the helmet without some kind of weirdness, we have a family reporting a wall full of live squirrels, although my boss is skeptical. Oh, also, a resident is angrily insisting there is a pervasive poop smell in his apartment, and we have a kind of poopish aroma surrounding the outside of the office that my boss and the VP are in denial about. And my boss is faking a limp. No movement on the job hunt front, but I'm still hopeful really hoping that the company that I'm most interested in gets back to me about interviewing this afternoon. But I know that their HR department is slammed with some big projects right now. If it were me, I'd find a way to anonymously report the FFH issue. If something happened that affected your job you could hopefully get unemployment while you looked. 
I definitely understand the needing a paycheck, and a lot of what you're dealing negatively affects you versus others, but for things that hurt residents I'd be hoping to find a way to have them held accountable. I know there's no easy answer here, so no judgment, but I hope that you can not only get out but help the others being hurt here. Opus, the problem is that she is very careful to put nothing in writing and she also has the people under her process payments and paperwork and the like, so you couldn't directly pin things on her. And a lot of the stuff that makes me super uncomfortable is kind of nebulous, difficult to report. The office is also so small that it's difficult to remain anonymous. I do have a notebook where I keep track of everything, so I'm hoping to be able to quietly pass some info along after I leave which will hopefully be sooner rather than later. Posted four hours later. An update to this week at the Helmuth. My boss disappeared for two hours to go and get a birthday cake for our new maintenance supervisor, then called everyone into the conference room to surprise him with it. As we were eating cake, she started asking everyone to tell stories about the baddest thing their kids have ever done. Long story short, I now know how many people the maintenance supervisor's daughter had premarital sex with. Why? Why? What is wrong with everyone here? Also, the air coming out of the vent in my office right now smells distinctly of pee, and my boss is insisting that I am imagining it. But I promise, guys, it smells like a really unclean public restroom. Update. As the helmet turns, so are the days of my working life. Let's see. The war against some children continues apace, with my manager reaching out to it to see about blocking access to Fortnite and any other thing she thinks she's seen the kids looking at in the business center. We also had a little rolling office chair stolen out of the business center, which caused her to fully flip out. Residents have 24-hour access to the BC, but they no longer have 24-hour access to any chairs. They now have to check them out from the office when we are open, and stand when we are not. Additionally, my boss started yelling that she was going to put cameras in the vents, and actually said I'll put up that one I had in your office. So, I guess the fact that she put surveillance up in my personal office space is now suddenly openly acknowledged. Things still keep getting moved on my desk when I am away from it. A flower that I put on my desk keeps getting moved from where I can see it to a spot behind me. A piece of paperwork that my boss asked me to set to the side and hold on to suddenly vanished right before she told me that she needed me to find and give her said paperwork. And my phone and accounting calculator keep getting swapped no matter how many times I put them back. In other news, a resident became enraged that he could not rent out our office and the pool for a lingerie party. He did not accept that having said lingerie party on a day when we would not be open would not make letting him use our office and pool for this any more feasible. He was kind of dressed like the people who own the really creepy strip club in Flashdance. It was very hard to keep a straight face. After the resident left our new maintenance supervisor took this as his opportunity to list every stripper who ever lived at a property where he worked and describe their physique in depth. I also had to have an almost hour-long meeting with my boss on Wednesday, where I think I got nagged and I definitely got gaslit before my boss demanded to know if I was looking for another job and said I owed it to her to tell her immediately. I was extremely startled, and wound up telling her that if I couldn't get through a week without someone coming in and threatening to shoot one of us, with no repercussions, or have my safety concerns taken seriously, or not of it shrugged off when I relay that a resident has followed my car off property and forced an angry interaction on me at a red light, I couldn't exactly view my situation as being good. I also said that I thought it was ridiculous that I basically I am going to have to get a doctor's note to use post-it notes since I am not neurotypical, and I require them to stay organized, do my job. So, I am still not allowed to use post-it notes. Now I suddenly am getting a mentor because my boss says that she and my grandboss think I am struggling with my position. Also, my boss is now claiming that she spoke with the guy who threatened to shoot us all and he apologized. And just yesterday she said she was going to call the resident who followed me to the red light before Christmas and have words with her. I sort of doubt both of these things. I do not doubt that I probably need to get out of here very quickly. I've been applying like crazy, and it is only one week past when the people at the job that I really want said they would get back to me. So, fingers crossed for some movement soon. And for fans of the squirrels, I literally just got a call from a resident who says there are a few frolicking in his loft. Happy Friday. Update. Welcome to the Helmuth update. Strap in. It's a doozy. In an attempt to cut down on length I have continued the new tradition of limiting it only to the most noteworthy, worst things to happen each day. But it's still a novel. Monday. Before even clocking in for the day I discovered that someone on the property has been hunting the squirrels, leaving their tiny, squirrely mortal remains where they fell. At least three squirrel soldiers had been gunned down, 
After clocking in, I discovered there had been another rash of car break-ins on the property and a hot-wired ATV. Among the items stolen were two rifles, a pistol, and a duffel bag filled with knives. Some may remember a previous update where I detailed a resident following my car after I had left work, alone, in the dark, and was on my way home, and very angrily confronted me at a red light because I hadn't had a package for her in the office earlier that day. Well, that just happens to be the same person who that particular haul was stolen from. You can imagine how wonderful I felt when I connected those dots. That was the point where I decided to scrap operation, carefully and meticulously search for the perfect employment opportunity in favor of operation. Find any job as long as it pays the minimum I need to pay bills. Tuesday, the new leasing consultant, who also happens to secretly be the friend, former tenant of my boss, and who I am 99.99999% sure my boss wants to replace me with, started. Five minutes into working together she had told me that her credit card was stolen Monday and that stand by for hellacious run on sentence meant to convey the pace and manic but chipper tone utilized. She was definitely going to catch them and she already had some pretty good ideas on how to find them and she thought maybe they lived at this place she moved out of in October and she had thought about calling the landlord but then thought maybe not because the landlord might be kind of trashy and might tip them off and she was going to get them. Guys, she's scary. I was relieved when my manager took her out for a two-hour fancy welcome lunch. While they were out I discovered another hidden camera. This one is disguised as a desk fan, and you would think that would be the biggest helmet happening of the day, but you would be wrong. That honor would go to having a resident call us to tell us that some man with a pit bull has been inhabiting the vacant apartment above her for over two months. Did my boss contact the police? No. Did she tell anyone outside of the office? No. Instead she handed me a can of wasp spray and packed us all into the golf cart so we could go check it out. We did run into our courtesy officer on the way over. He likes to drive around the property with his lights on and occasionally whoop his siren, so at least he wound up coming with us. But the whole thing was just a world of no. The guy wasn't there, and neither was the pit bull, but my boss opted not to change the locks on the apartment because she wants to set a trap and catch him, which is, I am sure, a completely sane thing. In Bizarro World, Wednesday, we learned that the trap yielded no vagrants or dogs. My boss assigned me 10 hours worth of work with the admonishment that it must be completed by EOD. I work 8 hour days and am not allowed to have overtime. My boss then held a, pointlessly, 2 hour meeting, after which she assigned me a surprise mandatory and lengthy, online class to be taken immediately after my assigned lunch hour. She stonily said nothing the several times I told her it was a class I had already taken, then announced that I would be taking the class with the new leasing agent. It kind of seemed like this was only so the new leasing consultant could watch me and make sure I wasn't working on anything else while the class was going. At this point I realized I would only have 4.5 hours of active work time, not continuous, to complete the 10 hours worth of required work and began to scream internally. At the tail end of my lunch break I applied for a part-time cashier position at my local Whole Foods, thinking that I could at least quit the helmet and, if I cut my budget to the bone, eek by while looking for something else. My application was rejected within half an hour. I cried at my desk, but somehow kept anyone from noticing. It was a very low point. Thursday, I had to perform all of the monthly close-out duties for the property on a very tight time limit. My boss seemed determined to keep that from happening while simultaneously whipping me to finish them even more quickly and piling more extraneous same-day assignments on me and also another hour-long mandatory class. This was also the day that my new co-worker gleefully told me about how she is destroying the woman she suspects stole her credit card. Her story involved reverse lookup searches, plans to drive by the person's home that night to get pictures of their car tags, and how she already had a friend sign this person up for thousands of medical lists. I'm going to teach this bitch a lesson was the last thing she very gleefully said about it, unless you count the cackling that followed. Y'all, she's terrifying. After that there was a yelling, swearing maintenance supervisor who then demanded a maintenance employee's apartment number so he could go and pound on the dude's door during his lunch break. More car break-ins, they are now happening on property in broad daylight. My boss discovered a phone that was left in one of the cars that was broken into and then whisper hissed to the leasing consultant that it happened and that he was not to tell me about it or tell me that is why a group of sheriff deputies would be coming to her office. Oh, and I got another impossible load of work for the next day, with instructions to make sure the new leasing consultant was with me as I completed it. Oh, and I found out that the file that mysteriously disappeared from my desk last week, and that I had desperately needed for an assignment that the boss gave me, 
was, in fact, in the office of my boss. She lied about it, which weirdly made me feel better, at least I'm not crazy and paranoid for thinking she took it, you know. Friday, at the time of this writing, we have not been open for long. Before my boss made it in, she called the maintenance supervisor and instructed him to grill me on why I hadn't walked the moveouts that turned in keys at close yesterday. This is not a reasonable thing. And the gruff the crime dog informed me that she found the credit card woman's Facebook, had found her husband, that the woman is a hospice nurse, that no one will let her access their security footage without a police report, and that she was considering calling the woman's husband and blackmailing him. Send. Help. Update. So, this week has been jam-packed with the usual. If you've been reading these updates for a bit, you may remember that a few weeks back I was raked over the coals for not depositing checks that I did not know about. I was written up for it yesterday. There also has been a marked uptick this week in residents and just moved out former residents coming in to yell at me, sending their moms in to yell at me, psycho calling me, tricking me into three-way calls with collection agents, and in general stalking me like I'm the last mouse on Cat Island. The war on children seems to have morphed into the war on residents in the business center, with my boss turning the heat in the BC up to 85 degrees whenever she notices anyone using it. The person who followed me to the red light that time and had the guns and duffel bag filled with hunting knives stolen. Their car was stolen this week. My boss is now setting elaborate traps for criminals and has actually chastised sheriff deputies for not being more grateful for her help. Actual words she said, do you not realize that I am your partner in fighting crime? I could not make this stuff up if I wanted to. There was a terrible shooting at a property just down the road from us this week, which my boss seems to think is fodder for many hilarious jokes. But the new leasing consultant, McGruff, has been giving her stiff competition in who can say the most horrible things. It's like a racist, homophobic, horrible person Olympics up in here. Some examples, my boss started talking about dot Indians versus feather Indians. McGruff countered by insisting on referring to a resident whose name she didn't know as Flava Flav. My boss mused out loud about whether she should name some videos that she was going to give to the police of guys walking around the property Jack Boys 1 and 2 or Thug 1 and Thug 2. And McGruff mused out loud that she would need to stay away from certain openly gay residents because women always hit on her. I could go on, but I'm sure you get the picture. It's bad. I'm pushing back when they say this stuff, but they seem to be oblivious to it. And that's the week in a nutshell. Drama, crime, and terrible people being terrible. Again. Update. Oh my friends, what a week it has been. Are you ready for the Helmuth weird, the bad, and the no no no? If so, please read on. The week opened with me driving up to the gate on Monday to find it, well, totaled. One gate door was functioning somewhat normally, but the other was dangling at a crazy, impossible angle and wildly oscillating back and forth with a jacket, twisted, very sharp portion of the arm sticking out from it and threatening to gouge any cars attempting to pass through, so that was fun to navigate. The video captured by the gate camera, which I saw later, revealed that someone had pulled up to the gate at 1am on Friday night, Saturday morning, waited for 3 minutes, I guess for someone to come by and open the gate for them, before losing patience and going straight to ramming speed. I managed to successfully time my entrance so my car remained ungouged. I then drove past a scene that included the property dumpster surrounded by old mattresses and weird trash piles, screened patios with giant holes cut in the screen and a few squirrel fights before pulling up to find a line of people with gouged cars and defiled patios waiting for the office to open. We also had sewage water inexplicably start backing out of the grates by our buildings and into the first floor breezeways right up to doors of our residence apartments. No buono. A part of me wants to blame the army of squirrels just because it would be funny, but the rest of me would just really like weird sewage and plumbing issues to stop happening. This week we also had mystery flooding of possible sewage water into a lady's closet, and strange backups in another resident's bathtubs and sinks. All of them, which he waited three days to report. Driving onto property this morning, I witnessed a jogger really hauling it, far beyond a sprint, and then I realized that he was fleeing a very angry, hissing goose that was in hot pursuit. This is noteworthy both because one, well, geese are evil but you don't see people fleeing them every day, and two, we don't have geese on property. At least, we didn't, I guess some new wildlife is moving in. I already mentioned the holes cut into the patio screens, apparently there was a rash of bike theft Sunday night. Folks, please don't keep your bikes on your patio or balcony, they could easily disappear. We also discovered that the squatter with the pitbull has been playing musical apartments and that either one of our vendors is purposefully leaving vacant apartments unlocked when they visit or have made a copy of our vacant key. So my boss is in full crime fighting mode again. 
she also has arranged for a bait car to be put on property and law enforcement have agreed to stake out the property as well. Yay for actually going through the police for some things. However, she has also doubled down on her homemade traps and also on inserting herself personally in situations where we should really just be calling, at minimum, the courtesy officer. So, guys, it's pretty nuts. She is really, really happy, though. McGruff has been assisting with the more outlandish plans, and seems to greatly enjoy stoking my boss's crime fighter fire. Speaking of McGruff, she remains both a terrible and incompetent worker, and has nearly caused my good leasing consultant to walk out several times this week by one, avoiding any actual work and sticking it on literally anyone else, two, being incredibly creepy and inappropriate, and all times, and three, ordering him around and talking to everyone who isn't the boss like we're five years old. I can't really blame him. In addition to sharing very personal details about her life that no one asks for or wants to hear in unsettling ways, she typically loudly says some hook line intended to get us to ask for a follow-up loudly, as though she were talking to herself, but then will keep repeating it when no one asks for a follow-up before finally just launching into telling us whatever tidbits she had in mind the whole time. She now feels comfortable enough to be very very touchy. The touch barrier got broken when I wore a very cool, if I do say so myself, jacket that I spent, like, a month sewing into work. She immediately ran up and started hissing in a very golem-like voice about how she had to have it. Could she buy it off of me? And, when she learned that I had made it, demands that I make her an identical one, all while stroking the back and arms of the jacket while I was still in it. I politely told her no to all jacket requests and got out of touching range and indicated that I'm not big on touching, but now she feels totally comfortable patting people in the office. My boss is not helping to discourage this behavior, probably because she is not the one being touched, and she is also not discouraging the maintenance supervisor from putting out his wife's Mary Kay stuff. In fact, she's actively pushing it on residents and people who come into tour, so it's as professional an environment as always. My boss also tried to force me to write a slumlord propaganda speech this week so she could read it out at city council meeting in order to protest a desperately needed in my town ordinance that would protect tenants from retaliatory landlords, which caused me to break into literal hives. I managed to creatively avoid doing so, which forced her to write her own speech, which was, pardon the vulgarity, pretty batshit and off topic. Which I know, because we watched the live stream of the meeting back in the office, she basically took off for the whole day to prepare and then head downtown to fight for her right to be horrible and abuse power. Someone actually got up to speak just to point out that nothing she said even remotely applied to the ordinance being passed and it was glorious. And, now that I think about it, that was probably the high point of my week. As of this writing I am strongly considering claiming sickness and going home so I can apply to new jobs all afternoon. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to include this. A resident who has been banned from the office for threatening me, spitting on me, and throwing money orders in my face came into the office while I was there alone with McGruff. They were exceedingly belligerent and were refusing to leave, and I was the one having to try to deal with them and tell them that they had to leave and that the courtesy officer would remove them otherwise. McGruff did not help. McGruff did not call for assistance. McGruff just picked up her phone to record it. Update. Well, hello. I did not see you sitting there. Welcome to the weekly Helmuth update, where I try to entertain you with the horrors of my current daily working existence. Won't you read along? All spare time this week has been spent applying to new jobs, wistfully refreshing my account on local big university's career site to confirm that the three application I have still in process there are, in fact, still in process, and feverishly hoping someday I might get a call back on one of them, or any of the five million applications I currently have circulating around town. It has not been a great week on the Helmuth. McGruff has been a lot this week. Just a lot. She has been having frequent tantrums, meltdowns at her desk. Is the phone ringing too much? There will be foot stamping, screaming, and swearing. So much swearing. I swear like a sailor when I'm not in a professional environment. But this is pretty, um, excessive. And if you're curious, the phone hasn't been ringing all that much, it's been light to normal. She attempted to get out of entering some applications, a big part of her job, and when she was unable to palm them off on anyone she claimed that her password stopped working halfway through putting them in. Not how that works, and had a full red-faced wobbler. Interestingly, when the decent leasing consultant and I just ignored her the passwords magically started working again and she quietly went back to entering them. It took her three hours. Oh, and yesterday a software program froze up for a minute, and she had a tantrum and threw her glasses. This is not behavior my boss is addressing. Dealing with, though. No, she had a different focus this week. 
a few weeks ago, when McGruff very first started, my boss handed out anonymous surveys about what stresses us out at work. 1. It is impossible to have a really anonymous survey here, as there are only three workers in the office not including my boss, who knows our handwriting, and three maintenance employees. 2. The stuff she had on it was really weird. Like, really weird. Some of it very clearly targeting specific people. One of those people being me. She had chatty coworker down as a thing you could circle as something that truly stresses you out at work. She has referred to me as chatty previously. And she watched us put our slips in the box she had set out, so she knew what order we put ours in. I did not have a great feeling about this at the time. Well, cut to yesterday, and our over an hour and a half long staff meeting. She told us that she had reviewed our responses to this survey, which she also proudly told us she had written and developed herself, the lady, and that she had found out some very surprising things in doing so, which she then discussed thoroughly with her boss. First off, she told us she was surprised and happy to see that only one person had circled unavailable supervisor as something that stressed them out at work. However, the strong majority had circled chatty coworker. Now, as I have mentioned, these surveys were weird, so we, we being the office staff minus my boss and two of the maintenance workers, so, a strong majority, had discussed them at length, including what we had circled, put down. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that everyone in that group had circled unavailable supervisor, and no one had circled chatty coworker. So it was at that point in the meeting that my eyes started twitching uncontrollably. It was at this point that my boss started laying out the new office rules. We are no longer allowed to have any personal conversations at work, i.e., we are not allowed to speak unless it is in regards to a specific work task, although this is being applied more to me than to anyone else. We also must all lock our cell phones in our desks as we are not allowed to look at them unless we are on our lunch break, on a very occasional bathroom break of about 3 minutes, or are not at work. She also explained that she is exempt from this, as all of her cell phone activities are work-related. I never knew that cat fostering, Instagram, and planning personal Mardi Gras activities were work-related. But okay. The reason for the cell phone ban is that a number of people circled coworker not doing their part. The people who circled this, by the by, were specifically thinking about all of the times we can't complete our work because we are waiting on the boss. My boss stressed heavily that we are all to do nothing but work straight through our 8 hours with no chit chat or distractions because we are being paid top dollar and if we are not able to do this we need to look for a new job that will not pay top dollar. I then was given a number of assignments to cram into an impossible timeline and was told that I would need to sit in on a two-hour conference call with my boss when I got back from lunch. I was pretty upset about the meeting. I hate lying, I hate stupid, and I cannot fathom sitting in complete silence while grinding out impossible amounts of work for eight hours straight every day for the foreseeable future, and just could not handle the thought of sitting with her for two hours, and am slightly ashamed to admit that I called in from lunch claiming car troubles that would keep me out for the afternoon. I spent the entire afternoon looking for and applying to new job postings. I came in early this morning to find an email from my boss saying that since I had mentioned the need for better training in my survey she was giving me about 6 hours worth of online classes that she required certificated on in addition to the 4 plus hours of online classes that the company is requiring, all due in the same time frame. I also saw she had sent an email to both myself and the person from corporate who is supposed to be my mentor making a cheery introduction and asking said mentor to email me a time to call her that day and introduce myself after I had told her I was out with car troubles. The mentor had emailed us both back suggesting I set something up for any time after 3.30. Needless to say, my boss did not tell her that I was out for the day. Fortunately, no one was in at work when I saw all of this, so no one was present to hear my smothered screams. On the lighter side, I was greeted with a shower of frog when I came into work today. Just the one. I guess he had been hanging out on the doorframe of my office, and he plopped right onto my head. Poor thing. It took me 5 or 10 minutes to catch him and release him outside. Also dealing with two flies and some rando unidentified winged insect that are insistent about smacking me in the face right now. Which is definitely not the worst insect I've experienced here. Blue. Oh, and squirrel guy called me personally this week to tell me that he looked forward to seeing me in court. Always fun. Update, oh my stars and garters, friends, I have survived another week on the Helmuth and am still of sound enough mind to write about it. And what a week it has been. Espionage, power plays with people of importance, shabiness, the gruff. Shall we dive right in? 
Remember when I was shiny and new to the Helmuth, and was more concerned with the unnatural number of freakish occurrences, fires, lightning strikes, insect and animal weirdness, the bees, the squirrels, and hazards to my personal safety. Being threatened, being spat on, being cornered by a drunken schizophrenic resident off of his meds, being trapped in the office for an hour by a meth head, being followed to a red light by an angry resident, etc. Then with the office and management shenanigans. Yeah, I remember those days, too. Not that that sort of stuff isn't still happening. I need to figure out how to link a photo so I can show you a photo of the Helmet's new Cat King. But even though we now have an undercover officer staking out the property at night, I had to throw another aggressive and abusive resident out of the office this week, not forgiving her actions here at all. But she charged and screaming because McGruff has literally zero soft skills and thoroughly antagonized her over the phone when the resident called us with a legitimate issue, and then left me to deal with her when the resident incredible hulked her way into the office. So, thanks for that, McGruff, and we are getting terrified calls from residents about snakes on the daily, the boss, and McGruff's show seems to be taking center stage weekly now. The gut-churning anxiety it produces is no, do a no. For those who missed the later in the day update to last week's installment, it seems that my boss very definitely went and took checks out of my bank bag and hid them under a filing chest in my office while I was at lunch last Friday. Thank God I had been through the bank bag right before I went to lunch and knew what was supposed to be in there. Thank God I went to run them right when I got back and discovered they were missing. And thank God for McGruff of all people, who literally muscled my desk set apart and uncovered them. FYI, there is absolutely no way for the checks to have been where they were without being physically placed there, and some of the checks were from different partitions of my bank bag and would not have been bundled with the checks that needed to be run. Suo, yeah, very not normal or okay or possible for them to have just fallen down without me noticing like my boss suggested. On Monday I learned that she pulled my good leasing consultant into her office for a secret meeting and ordered him to investigate me and secretly call former residents to see if they got their move-out letters and dispositions. This would be pretty upsetting to find out anyway, but I have been telling her for over a month that I think something hinky has been going on with our outgoing mail. Our current regular mail carrier is really terrible. We are also having issues with our incoming mail and have even recently started giving her the letters to post from her local post office to make sure that they all actually get out and go where they are supposed to. She actually asked my leasing consultant point blank if they thought I was just not sending them, and ominously intoned that she was going to start secretly counting the stamps in my drawer. For the record, I have been begging her for new stamps for two months and have had to start buying my own. On Wednesday I also learned that she has started complaining to my consultant that I am not performing a specific task that she personally told me to stop doing. So, knives are out. But that's just the stuff affecting me personally. We've got major property drama happening this week, as we have been red tagged by the fire marshal. You know, what an event that was. We were told on Tuesday, the day before my boss was supposed to go on vacation for a few days, that it was going to happen due to things that I am 99.99% sure that she has personally known about for a few months. Of course, she immediately threw a fit and had meeting with the fire marshal scheduled for the very next day. She confidently assured us that this was all going to be taken care of and that being red tagged was not a thing that would actually happen to us since she was going to get this all sorted out. Her plan was to blame the fire company our property uses for being incompetent and not informing us of the issues. That again, I am 99.99% sure that she already knew about. Well, that did not go the way that she thought it would. Come Wednesday morning she was in the office, dressed in a power outfit, and loudly complaining about how she had to stay until 10pm the previous night, and how she hoped the fire marshal would show up sooner rather than later so she could wrap this up quickly because it was messing with the things she had scheduled for the day. Remember, she was supposed to be on vacation. I notified her when the fire marshal walked in and was instructed to tell him that she had someone in her office. She did not, although she quickly pulled a maintenance guy in there so she had a body to walk out, and that he could be seated because he was going to need to wait about 10 minutes. Going by the fire marshal's face he was not thrilled with this, nor were the representatives of the fire company that we use, who the fire marshal had brought along without telling my boss. I'm not going to lie, her face when she saw the large gathering was kind of great. The meeting lasted over an hour and was, uh, highly contentious. We could hear both the boss and the fire company people yelling loudly for huge chunks of it, as well as the awesome fire marshal repeatedly dead panning no, the property is being red tagged, that is the law, over and over. He was very Captain Holt-ish, and it was awesome. Result, property was red tagged. At this writing the property is still red tagged. 
and even though my boss left for her vacation. But due to new drama with the red tagging involving the maintenance supervisor setting up a sprinkler inspection that starts today, and my boss having a fit, and legitimately sending everyone text messages non-stop with only a 1-5 to five minute break in between them for over a 3 hour period yesterday afternoon. We have been ominously told that she may be in today. She is also claiming that she is calling the police chief and calling in personal favors and that the red tags will be cleared up and, nope, not how that is going to work, boss. And then there is McGruff. Ah, uh, McGruff, what can I say? She remains racist, worthless, work avoidant, and insane. She is completely incapable of following simple directives and she lacks the common sense given to tiny green apples. We actually had to stop her from busting up into the fire marshal meeting, while raised voices could clearly be heard, because she had someone on the line who asked to speak to our boss. She was going to walk straight in and inform the boss that she was transferring the call to her. Einstein she is not. That same day she informed us, and every single person who walked into our office, regardless of who they were or if she knew them, that she had spoken the police officer handling her identify theft case, and that the credit card thief had been identified. The culprit, she informed everyone, was an local school teacher, and not the couple that she stalked, photographed, had added to a large number of medical calling lists, and openly considered blackmailing, and that their arrest would be happening the next day. The next day came and she once again forced anyone who came into the office to listen to the story and showed everyone screenshots that the officer had sent her of the lady using her card at Walgreens, told everyone that she had found and stalked the lady and her son on FB the previous night, and that the lady was a special needs teacher, that she had cancer in September, and that the lady had just had a photo shoot for a local hospital because she was going to be a cancer survivor spokesperson for them. McGruff then gleefully proclaimed her excitement about the arrest, the inevitable loss of her teaching license, and the fact that she could possibly get two years in jail, at which point McGruff would loudly and angrily intone that she thought the lady would play the cancer card to reduce her sentencing. So yeah, super profesh. She has also been having non-stop tantrums and meltdowns because of the phones ringing too much. They are not being told she can't work late without managerial approval, and no she cannot just tell me that she is going to do it. She also does not have enough work to need to do this anyway. Being told that she cannot work through her required lunch break instead of clocking out. Being told that she needs to finish the online training classes that were supposed to be completed in her first week. She is finishing up week 5. Because the boss is texting and ordering her to, they are still not completed, and being told ack, no, please stop running that application, monthly closeout is still processing. She had been told no less than three times that day and several times the day before that applications absolutely could not be run during closeout. The tantrums involve stomping, barefoot one time, yelling, f-bombs, and all sorts of great stuff. Super, p-r-o-f-e-s-h. And as this is probably the longest helmet entry yet, it is probably time to cut off. Happy Friday, everyone. Cross your fingers that boss stays away so I can continue getting actual work done without having to simultaneously foil evil plots. Update, another week on the helmet, another helmet right up. The search for a non helmet job continues, although I am currently exceedingly bummed out due to not getting two positions I was up for. But I'm trying to remember that every job that I don't get brings me closer to the one that I finally do. And also that, really, it's only been a few months and these things sometimes take a hot minute. I actually applied yesterday for a really great sounding position at local big university that would center primarily on things that I particularly love to do, so fingers crossed that I make it to the interview stage. The helmet itself has had another influx of weird this week. I'm still having to bounce the same resident who has been banned from the office, but now I have residents making appointments with me because they believe that if they have an appointment it means that they get to scream at me for the full 20 minute block that they requested and I have to sit in silence for the full time frame. This happened twice this week. Both residents were enraged to learn that no, that is not how that works. We also are experiencing an uptick in the really weird, with my boss making us all watch endless footage from one of the cameras in her office of what she claims are orbs, ghosts and another resident coming in and complaining that his apartment is very haunted. Apparently when he and his roommates moved in they felt a weird presence, which eventually progressed to seeing weird stuff, and as of this week the resident says that something invisible threw a spoon at his roommate. I do not think they will be renewing. We are no longer red tagged, although I think the boss is in real trouble over it because being on fire watch costs $840 per day, and we were on it for many days, and we were already way over budget. This has left her with a large amount of ire to distribute, although for the moment her attention has slipped off of me and is squarely on the terrible new leasing consultant, 
McGruff. McGruff's terrible behavior, inability to follow simple directives, and repeated attempts to work through her lunch break, work overtime, and openly work off of the clock have apparently both embarrassed and angered the boss. Since the boss only goes after one person at a time, she has suddenly started being really nice to me and complimenting me on my work while telling me that she is giving McGruff assignments specifically to mess with her and asking me to report anything awful that McGruff does. I do not feel great about any of this. Although McGruff does so many truly incompetent and unprofessional things that I'm not about to cover for her. I do have to kind of laugh about the fact that my boss goes to the good leasing consultant, who is a dude, to verify any troubling incidents or behaviors that I report to her. Like when McGruff started dropping F-bombs in the office while people were around and threw her glasses, because women are so dramatic and she needs to know that I am being honest. Sure, boss. Whatever. Meanwhile, the maintenance supervisor keeps telling me really inappropriate stories, like the gem this week about a property manager that did not wear panties. The phrase she smiled at me, and not with her mouth was used. Yes, I documented it and it is going into what is going to be a massive file for HR. I just want to get a little bit closer to having a new job lined up before I send it off. Ugh. So, gross. In Helmuth Animal News, apparently 50 minutes 100 rats skittered out of the dumpster when it was being cleaned, repaired, and the residents are starting to see them pop up in non-dumpster areas. I suggested we preemptively contact pest control, but was shot down. In less gross animal news, we currently have a tiny and adorable armadillo hanging out under our office. McGruff has been lobbying to have it murdered because she insists it will give her leprosy. In a real even a broken clock is right twice a day moment, my boss informed McGruff that we absolutely will not murder the tiny armadillo, and that McGruff's fear of contracting leprosy from it can easily be laid to rest by her resolving not to crawl under the office and touch the armadillo. I will admit to enjoying this moment a little too much. Also, I've been leaving a little bit of fruit out by the porch as an armadillo treat. Update. Well guys, it has turned out to be a pretty terrible week, even by Helmuth standards. There have been termite swarms in apartments, baby squirrels trapped in heater closets wreaking havoc, assumedly adorably. A terrible instance where I laughed about the squirrels and then learned that my boss was making some hideous homophobic joke at the expense of the pest control lady who was dealing with the squirrel situation and thought I was laughing at her joke. McGruff, well, she has decided that I am her enemy and am sabotaging her, and she also has been slipping out to make 30 minutes personal calls several times per day this week which has my boss on the warpath, which McGruff is also blaming me for, and all of the usual fun. It was mostly rolling off of my back. Because 1. My boss being mad at McGruff means I am out of her doghouse and can work without being gaslit, given impossible projects, or otherwise punished. And 2. The job hunting is going well and I think I might have some pretty good prospects that might actually, finally, turn into employment offers. I was feeling really buoyant and hopeful, and then a resident tried to physically attack me. I want to stress that I am okay. The resident was stopped from actually laying hands on me, but it was extremely upsetting. It started with a phone call, where the resident called demanding to speak to the manager who was off property about an issue with a service request and who snapped in the middle of the call and began yelling and being really aggressive before threatening that she was coming over right then to see my rude ass. Guys, we have the call recorded and I have listened to it several times since and I still don't know why she flipped out and started screaming. I went to tell my leasing staff to call the courtesy officer and the maintenance crew right away because I felt that this person really was heading directly to office and felt that she might continue shouting, create a scene and refuse to leave when asked. Then all of a sudden she was screeching into the parking lot and charging into the office, demanding to know who is Helmuth. Where the hell is Helmuth? I tried to calm them down, they kept yelling. I told them they would have to step outside and come back when we could all be calm. They refused and started swearing. I told them that they couldn't yell and swear in the office and would have to step outside. They told me they could damn well say whatever they wanted to to ask for what they pay to live here. I told them if they did not leave they would be escorted out and instructed McGruff to call the courtesy officer. They said that they were going to hand me my ass and lunge right at me. Fortunately, the one good maintenance tech that we have had gotten to the office at this point, the courtesy officer, it turns out, was off on a vacation that no one knew about and everyone else figured someone else would go to the office, jumped in front of them and caught them, 
and physically escorted them out. So I've filed a police report. I'm pressing charges. The property is filing for eviction. Although I don't think my boss has filled out an incident report or told corporate about anything. However, I've made sure to tell my corporate mentor about it. And I am, obviously, very desperate to leave. My boyfriend and I crunch the numbers again and I still can't quit without another job lined up. But at least it seems like I have prospects on the not too far off horizon. I have an interview for an admin position next week. And while the job is not as awesome as some of the ones I have applications in progress for over at local big university, if I get an offer and it meets my minimum income requirements I will very gratefully take it. Update. Hello from the Helmets. Sorry to anyone who thought that I had succumbed to armadillo leprosy or wildlife attacks. I promise I am very much alive. There was just a lot of Helmuth business to take care of earlier today that delayed posting anything. It's been a long week and I am really looking forward to hitting the end of the day and going home. But a big thank you to everyone who said something nice, expressed concern, or flat out made me laugh up thread where my earlier absence was noted. We filed for eviction on the resident who tried to attack me last week, and they opted to move out and surrender their keys rather than have the judge actually order them out. We also learned that they are an assistant property manager at a nearby property, which kind of blows my mind. It may actually be worse than the Helmuth, guys, they apparently had a murder there last year and also their AM is, you know, a dreadful person who thinks it's cool to run screaming into someone's office and try to jump them. I'm still pressing charges against ex-resident, but it will probably be a while before anything happens there. On the job hunting front, I was rejected for three jobs that I thought I had a pretty good shot at, including the admin position that I was hopeful about last week but at least it was all on the same day so the bummeration wasn't spread out. I did get some feedback, which was primarily that the hiring manager couldn't get past the fact that I'm looking for a new job when I've only been at my current job for 9 minutes 10 months. I was laid off from my last job just shy of a year, and the job before that was the job where I originally swore off property management and was also not a lengthy tenure. I'm aware that I have a lot to overcome since I look like I've turned into a real job hopper. So this weekend I'm overhauling my resume again and also tweaking the way I address that in cover letters. On the plus side, I am still in the mix for two jobs at local big university, have a lead on another admin position outside of that, and just found two new job postings that sound up my ally, and that I should be really qualified for. Hope abides. The squirrel family that was living in the roof and walls of one of our buildings have been extracted. The pest control company sealed up two of the three exit holes they were using and attached a live trap to the other one. I've been pretty diligent about walking by and making sure the pest control company gets a call when they wind up in the trap. The maintenance supervisor was just planning to let them sit in the trap until they expired. But the last thing I need is the guilt of letting trapped creatures suffer, or ghost squirrels. Now that the squirrels are gone the residents in the building are saying that rats have moved in. I feel like there is some sort of circle of life, Lion King joke to make here, but I haven't been able to come up with it yet. We also now have two pelicans over by one of the ponds. Watching them eat is kind of mesmerizing. And now, the McGruff section of our novella, I had to pull her aside privately and address some of her behaviors this week, specifically the fact that, whenever my boss is not around, she has started openly rolling her eyes at me and being extremely adversarial whenever I give feedback, ask her to do anything, or, well, speak. I was extremely careful about what I said and how I said it, I cribbed heavily from Om's scripts, thank you Allison, and used the most neutral tone possible. I also immediately filled my boss in on everything that happened leading up to the conversation and everything that was said during it. Imagine my surprise when I found out that McGruff immediately ran to the good leasing consultant and told him that one, I screamed and yelled at her, and two, said a large number of crazy things that I did not and would not ever have said, and three, that I was enraged with McGruff specifically because she didn't help me when the resident tried to attack me last week. That last one is a real head scratcher, in particular, what would I have wanted her to do? I don't doubt that a 50-year-old woman could John Wick an assailant, but it certainly isn't something that I would expect from this 50-year-old woman and it certainly was not part of my discussion with her. So, the good leasing consultant immediately went to my boss because he didn't believe I would do or say anything she recounted and was really concerned about why McGruff would be saying that kind of stuff. And lo, my boss was displeased, as she loves the good leasing consultant and McGruff is already on her current hate list. And then McGruff apparently told an even more outrageous version of her story to the maintenance supervisor, the one who originally recommended her for the job here, 
who marched into my boss's office this morning to have me dealt with for my wicked ways. Fortunately my boss knew that the account presented was factually inaccurate, and had already heard from the good leasing consultant about McGruff's general behavior where I am concerned. If this had happened while my boss still had me squarely on her current hate list it probably would have gone badly for me, though. Anyway, the maintenance supervisor storming in with a crazy story about me then led to an impromptu and angry calling of a very long staff meeting of both office and maintenance employees, wherein my boss basically yelled at all of us but everything she said was really only intended for McGruff, and the maintenance supervisor in one or two instances. Drama, insubordination, gossiping about supervisors, and complaining about co-workers through improper channels were all top topics. Not acting like middle schoolers also came up extensively and shortly after the meeting I was instructed to make sure that McGruff has no appointments scheduled for 5.30 today, because my boss will be calling her into her office, which McGruff is not to be warned about in advance. I don't know if she's getting verbally counseled, getting written up, or worse, although worse seems unlikely, but I don't think McGruff is going to be very happy by the end of it. The good leasing consultant thinks she may just quit, but I don't think that's likely. I don't really think anything with McGruff has been handled correctly by my boss, and we definitely should not know about whatever is going down at 5.30. But it's kind of hard to feel a lot of sympathy when she doesn't do her job, lies all of the time, and is actively horrible to me. I have to admit that I am morbidly curious about what the fallout from all of this will be. And that's the Helmuth happenings for this week. Oh, also, the story McGruff told last week about her dad and her attorney stuff does indeed appear to have probably been made up. But she has already moved on to a new story. She is now telling everyone that Bank of America emailed her to say that she was liable for all of the money taken out of her account during the fraud thing that she told us about her first week working here. She says that this is because the woman stole and used a physical card, and that the bank will not cover the theft. I don't think that's how that works, but I am no banker. Is that how that works? Update, hello, friends, and happy Friday from the Helmuth. I hope today finds you well. Some of you may have seen my very late post last week, and may have seen that McGruff was supposed to get a talking to from my boss that might have been anything from a verbal counseling to an actual write-up. Well, that wound up not happening because my boss learned of something else and put those plans on pause. So, apparently a freshly box for former residents was delivered to an apartment where they no longer live. McGruff, who was moving a new resident into the apartment, saw the box, scooped it, allegedly, made one token call to the former tenants and, when she did not get them, decided she was going to have a nice big box of meals and took the package home. I saw her leaving with the box and asked if she had something delivered to the office, and she quickly blew through the above explanation. When I indicated that she should not just be taking something, pressed to see if boss knew about it, she got kind of crappy, aggressive with me and gave me a non-answer that led me to believe that boss signed off on her taking it. Um, it turns out this was not the case. And when my boss found out, she went through this whole elaborate thing where she blocked her cell number so it wouldn't come up on the office caller ID and pretended to be the company calling to ask about the package so she could then ask us if we knew anything about a freshly box. McGruff said yes, and when my boss asked her if she RT said it, McGruff got very aggro and crappy, with boss, a tyrant who will destroy you, over how of course she took the box home with her and of course she is eating the meals because otherwise they would have been thrown out. My boss just nodded and excused herself to go and secretly take pictures of the remaining meals that McGruff had stashed in the fridge, because she brought a few back to the office for lunches and to call HR. Last night at close she told both me and the good leasing consultant that HR was telling her what they had decided she should do with McGruff this morning. I don't think this is going to go well for her. In all honesty, I feel kind of weird about it. McGruff is a terrible employee and coworker, and she stole someone's fancy box of food. So, yeah, if she gets fired I guess it's not like it would be unwarranted. But my boss never once addressed any of the performance issues with McGruff or set expectations with her. I tried to, but even though I'm a supposedly a supervisor I don't have any power, and McGruff views me as an equal or less than, so it didn't have the same effect. And this week boss kept telling the good leasing consultant that she thinks McGruff ruins the office vibe and look and that seems kind of mean girls. But, on the other hand, McGruff repeatedly lies, actively dodges work, messes up the work she does do very badly, and stole someone's mail. Whatever is going to go down is supposed to happen within the hour, so I guess I can update in the comments. Right now boss is most concerned with the maintenance supervisor being mad at her because he is the one who recommended McGruff and told my boss to hire her. The rest of the week was challenging because poor scheduling meant we were drastically understaffed for a big part of it. 
basically just me and McGruff Monday through most of Wednesday, which has put me behind for monthly close-out activites. Boss took the good leasing consultant to an all-day leasing seminar on Wednesday with a quick stop afterwards to buy some materials suggested in the seminar, but a quick check of the class website revealed it was actually only 9.30 a.m. 12.30 p.m., so I was pretty peeved when they came back just after 5 p.m. But, the good leasing consultant later told me that boss talked to him extensively about the microphones in the office, and about recorded conversations she has listened to while she dragged him out shopping. She also told him explicitly that he was not allowed to tell anyone else in the office about the existence of the microphones at Alii if he is willing to go on the record with that we can probably go to HR about the surveillance crap and they might actually do something, so cross your fingers. He's got a small kid and possibly a baby on the way, though, so he is taking time to think over whether or not he wants to risk it. I can't exactly blame him for being cautious. Job hunting continues. I might have an in for an office coordinator position that I am applying for, and I think I've really nailed some good cover letters, so here's hoping for the best. Update, light on the horizon. Hello from the Helmuth. Well, actually, this Friday it is a hello from the my living room, as I have today off and just finished up what I think was a pretty good phone interview. Please cross your fingers for me. Here's hoping your week has treated you well. This week has been a really short one for me, but with a few notable happenings, the two biggest being the lack of McGruff and the fallout of Squirrel Magadan. So turneth the helmeth. McGruff's firing last week has had a huge impact on the office, mostly in positive ways. While we are now super short-staffed and have been really overwhelmed with resident issues and walk-ins, the energy is now palpably less terrible and everyone is able to better handle everything that gets thrown at us. If energy vampires are real, I think that lady might be one. We've also been uncovering countless presents from her that keep popping up. Mistakes she made that she actively hid, massive errors in leases and move-in documents, customer service nightmares that keep randomly detonating, gifts that are probably going to keep on giving for a month or two, and just grateful that we're not in the busy season, which would have just meant a lot more of that stuff lying in wait. McGruff also spent a lot of time on Friday post-firing texting the good leasing consultant. She is apparently outraged that she would be fired over taking home something perishable that was mailed to someone who didn't even live here anymore and that she was actually doing a favor by taking it. TGLC texted back once to say that the former resident in question actually had family who still lived on the Helmuth, and that they had come around asking about the package, to which McGruff replied, and I quote, well, how was I supposed to know that? So, you know, classy to the end. She has also reportedly blocked me specifically on all social media, which, I mean, I hadn't looked her up on social media before and don't really feel the need to now, so that seems odd. Apparently I'm the big bad. Meanwhile, the fallout from Squirrel Magadan rages on. It was determined that the building that had the large family, families, of squirrels in the roof, walls had finally had the last of the furry little commandos extracted, and the final entry point was sealed up. Well, apparently at least one squirrel had remained, and expired, somewhere above the apartment of one of our most volatile residents. This led to a lot of screaming phones calls to the office, while pest control and maintenance were in his apartment attempting to solve the issue. In-person tantrums directed at maintenance and pest control when they were unable to locate the issue, and the like. TGLC told my boss that she really needed to call the resident because the resident was freaking out and if he didn't speak to the manager he was likely to storm into the office and behave similarly to the now ex-resident that I'm pressing assault charges against. What was the reaction of boss? To send maintenance back, lock her office, and leave to walk the of the property. This did not wind up mollifying the resident, go figure. A few hours later, after boss had returned to her office and was on a call, I answered the phone only to be hit with a barrage of insults and to be threateningly told that the resident expected us to pay for a hotel room for his family, and that none of us would be going home until he was satisfied. Well, I've honestly pretty much had it with this kind of crap, so I politely told him that I would alert the manager to his request for a hotel room, that someone would call him back shortly with an answer, and that I was ending the conversation because I was unable to converse further if threats were being made. I then got off of the phone and went back to running money, which I was still doing 10 minutes later when he stormed into the front office, stormed past the nice couple signing their move-in paperwork, stormed up to my shut office door and let himself in before angrily slamming it closed and hissing and how are you doing today. And honestly, guys, I am freaking over this crap. 
I just stared at him and blandly asked him what he thought he was doing in my office. He demanded to know how he was being threatening. And boss must have realized that if she didn't do something very quickly I would probably quit on the spot because she called him into her office and read him the riot act before escorting him out of the building. This may be the first time she's ever not just left an employee to take a figurative bullet for her. Of course, on the way out he hissed at me to have blessed day and that he hoped I got home safely. So, I called in claiming emergency dental work the next day, Thursday, so I could go take the state civil service test and spent the rest of the day and will spend the rest of today applying to more jobs. Because f this. Also, I hope that Squirrel has family that will avenge him. And that's the latest at the Helmuth. Update, my friends, we have finally reached another week's end on the Helmuth. Today is a big day. Because the good leasing consultant has been given a terrific job offer and is giving his two-week notice. I am both thrilled for him and a little sick for me, since in two weeks I am going to be alone with my boss. During the busy season. While doing the work of three full-time positions with no flexibility on deadlines. But at least one of us is getting out of here. Additionally, after giving notice, the good leasing consultant is going to contact HR about the microphones, cameras, and the fact that my boss told him about them and ordered him not to tell the rest of us because she was listening to the recordings of us. That he thinks he saw her using the company card to buy herself stuff, the time she was in my office, and then all of a sudden a bunch of checks from the bank bag were hidden under a filing drawer where they couldn't have fallen, how she targets employees until they quit or she finds a reason to file them, and so on. I'm getting my documentation of everything together, starting with the time she forced me go to court with her, on the clock, to testify against a former employee of hers who got her fired from her last company, and praying that going to HR will actually help, won't be a horrible mistake, because y'all, I am cracking. I can't handle much more of the Game of Thrones shenanigans around here. I basically had a breakdown on Wednesday. We had our weekly staff meeting, and it went from the start of the day all the way up to my scheduled lunch break. It consisted of her reading out printouts from the internet about business etiquette, and implying that we are lazy, no, smelly, no, and not professionally dressed, we all dress appropriately, and she was wearing sweatpants. On this particular day, a further tightening on cell phone restrictions. They are to be locked in desks at all times if we don't leave them in our cars, and we all need to purchase wristwatches because we can't check the time on our phones anymore, etc etc. Berating us in very vague terms so we weren't sure what the problems were or who the berating was actually directed at, and then culminated in an hour and a half of us being forced to walk behind her around various buildings and through vacant apartments while she told the maintenance supervisor to relay various instructions to assorted vendors. It literally had nothing to do with the rest of us or our jobs, and it was directly after her telling us that we weren't being productive enough and increasing our workloads for the day dramatically. She also lectured us about not noticing issues around the property that we have actually been specifically reporting to her for months. When we got back, remember, just in time for me to clock out for the lunch time that my boss schedules for me, I was reprimanded by my boss for not having photos readily on hand from a file she put in deep storage. I don't know why this was the straw that broke the camel's back. But I went home for lunch in tears, which only got worse as the end of my break approached, and I couldn't force myself to go back. I claimed a family emergency and took some medication for anxiety. I found out from the good leasing consultant that boss was furious about my calling out, and that she was already sending nasty emails, he was copied on them, that seemed to be laying groundwork for future disciplining. Since I knew at that point that the good leasing consultant was going to be giving notice today, and that boss would back off of me as soon as that happened. Because she would not risk having zero office employees, I called in for Thursday and spent the whole day applying to new jobs. I forced myself to come in today, but my hands are still shaking off and on and I'm trying really hard to not be a mess. I know I can't just keep calling out, though. So, uh, yeah, not the most positive update, and no funny news of the Squirrel Army or resident wackiness. Sorry guys, I'm just in a very bad headspace, but I'm working to get out of it. And hey, every week has to bring me closer to the day where I get to start a new and hopefully sane job, right? Update, greetings from the Helmuth. It's been a pretty full week. Awesome phone interview with local big university for an admin position with a boss that sounds really nice and normal. Boss having me followed and tracking my every moment, including how long I take to pee. Extreme weather. I got chased by a goose. But the thing that has been taking up the most of my time has been talking to HR. I've been writing timelines, pulling documentation, 
taking pictures of cameras, microphones, ah, and I still have a lot to finish writing up. Some of it's stuff that I didn't even mention here, because it sounds super crazy even in light of the usual Helmuth stuff, but I have documentation that will prove it actually happened. I think boss suspects something is up, and I am slightly terrified of what the fallout, actual results of all of this will be. But the way I currently see it one, could it really get worse? And two, at the very least, I probably won't have to worry about being set up, terminated for a few weeks. And I have had some really positive job hunt feedback, results, so even if I just stall everything here for a bit, I genuinely think I might have some decent job offers on the horizon. Please keep crossing fingers and toes, lighting candles, etc. And for those that remember the war on post-its, which my boss had banned from the office, even after I told her that I actually needed them for my organization system due to being non-neurotypical, and stating that I could bring in a doctor's note for them. The HR rep has said that she will get me my post-its. H-U-Z-Z-I-H. So, if there are any updates on any of this, or if I manage to get everything sent off to HR and have time to write up being tailed by the maintenance supervisor, my mission, impossible exploits getting photos of my boss surveillance equipment, or the great goose escape I will comment on this post. But guys, maybe things won't always be terrible. Maybe I'll get out. Maybe my boss won't be able to keep terrorizing people. It is a day of hope. Update. Hello all. Greetings from the Helmuth, which I will hopefully be leaving soon. This week has been crazy, but not in the funny animal and natural phenomenon story kind of way. My boss has been interviewing people to fill our two vacant leasing positions. But they have been, well, they have seemed kind of odd. For example, she brought this one dude in for a second interview and it lasted two hours. The first hour was in the model apartment in a round property, the second involved whispering in her office. That's, that's not normal, right? I don't know how that could be normal. She's also been conducting a lot of off-site interviews. We'll get text messages saying that she forgot to tell us, but she gotta resume the afternoon before and the person couldn't make it to us on their lunch break because they worked in the next town over so she was going to be in late because she was going to meet them somewhere to interview them. Then she'll over-explain later about why she had to meet them, but that she didn't think they would work out. Guys, this is an entry-level leasing position. That's a really weird thing to do, right? I've also still been pulling documentation and sending stuff to HR, who are also talking to the good leasing consultant later today in depth. I thought I was done, but then when I was out something incredibly shady happened involving boss having our temp shred checks from December that she knew I needed to go through, and that she had previously attempted to paint a false narrative about via email, so I had to pull all of the previous emails and send a write-up in. I don't know if anything is going to come of this, or, more specifically, if anything good is going to come of it, but I've just reached this point where it can't get worse or more upsetting so, why not? The reason I was out yesterday is pretty great, though. I had an in-person interview at local big university for an office coordinator position with a department that seems awesome, and supportive, and process nerdy, and I think I did really well, thanks, Allison. The job seems interesting and very busy and rewarding and I will know the decision by the end of next week. I also have just had some friends forward a ton of openings with the state, several of which I actually have some great connections I can use. The job hunt is actually the most positive it has been since I started looking. Hore. I am working alone with Temp, who can only answer phones and do filing, today, and so I am doing the work of the entire office, and starting Monday I will be performing the duties of three full-time positions until new people are hired and trained. So here is hoping I get good news from local big university, the sooner I can give notice, the better, but I actually feel like it might happen soon, which is wonderful. Update, an exhausted hello from the Helmuth. It is day 5 of trying to cover 3 full time jobs, while my manager has mostly been absent for the week, so actually kind of covering 4 positions. I am so, so tired guys. Awesome temp is still awesome, but also still can only answer the phone, and either hand the call off or take a message, and file stuff. But she's lovely and sane and will talk about end game with me, and keeps me from being completely alone or alone with Hell Boss, which would be even worse. The drudgery struggle is real. Some of you may remember me mentioning my boss engaging in some very strange interview behavior while trying to fill our two open leasing positions. Well, my boss has, secretly, I am not supposed to know this yet, told Awesome Temp that she has hired the guy who had the two-hour second interview, and he is starting in June. June. She apparently hired him last week sometime. To start in June, there has been no movement in filling the other open position. I am drowning. No word from local big university yet, but one, the day is still young, 
and two, like some of you have mentioned, a decision by today was a pretty optimistic timeline, and I wouldn't be surprised if it takes two or three weeks longer than they estimated. I felt like I knocked the interview out of the park at the time, but none of my references have been contacted yet, however. I have had several people who work at local big university tell me that their references weren't contacted until after the decision to hire them had been made, so I'm doing my best to just not think about. I've also been trying to apply to more jobs, but I'm just so wiped out by the time that I get home that I can barely string coherent thoughts together, and I keep walking into my furniture, so many weird leg bruises. I remain hopeful, and I also keep doing every silly good luck ritual that I can think of. If I actually do hear anything today I will update in the replies. The HR investigation into all of the stuff that I reported about my boss, the hidden microphones, the bullying, making me do non-work things for her off property while on the clock, trying to force me to use PTO after telling me I could make up time and then coding it to my sick time when I pushed back on that. Various other shady things is still open and they have a scheduled long talk with the good leasing consultant, even though he is now gone this coming Monday. I have also reported some possible payroll fraud from yesterday. Hell boss left me by myself for most of the day. Well, awesome temp was there, but as previously discussed, she can't actually do anything. To go to a very important conference that was actually just a front for getting four hours of credit towards her personal real estate license, not a thing that is required or needed for her job. Not this job, anyway. And it wouldn't be a Helmuth update without at least one wacky story. I like to call this one why do I have to repeatedly tell someone to put on pants? Because I spent all day Tuesday telling a teenage girl that she could not walk around the common areas in underpants, could not swim in underpants, could not lounge by the pool in underpants, could not swim in sheer shorts over the underpants, could not do Instagram photo shoots at the pool in her underpants, and finally had to tell her that she and her guests were banned from the pool for the day, and would not be allowed to return without appropriate attire. Her response each time was to aggressively twerk. I finally had to resort to clapping my hands the same way I do when my dog doesn't want to get in his kennel to get them to leave. This is my life now, but hopefully not for much longer. Update, the finale. So, it's been a very tense week on the Helmuth. Another building got struck by lightning. The pervy groundskeeper apparently was taking pictures of ladies bending over to pick up dog poop, which my boss insists was probably work-related. She actually told the resident who called to complain that she was sorry if we're offended. But per the lease we can photograph residents if we choose to. But I am more caught up in the repercussions of going to HR a few weeks ago. HR talked to my former co-worker, the good leasing consultant, on Monday. He actually gave me a call and let me know that the HR rep asked a lot of questions about the camera, microphones and how often my boss is out of the office, and that he thought they were going to do something and everything was going to be okay. Later that day, the HR rep called my boss and apparently asked a few questions about TGLC, and I guess that's when my boss caught scent of something in the wind. All of a sudden she was asking me all kinds of questions about TGLC and talking about how he was a disappointment and saying that he had done something and probably made himself ineligible for rehire. What a shame. What will he do when he decides he doesn't like it over at his new place and tries to come back? Was an actual sentence uttered, and thank God she called that out from her office and was not looking directly at my face, because it probably pretty clearly read who would ever want to come back. The next morning, Tuesday, I overheard her on the phone with the VP. The first thing I heard her say was well, apparently TGLC has been talking to HR rep, about which I know not what, but she was calling and asking me questions before going into the most terrible smear job about the guy, her formerly favorite employee, who, by the way, had an amazing work ethic and basically kept the place afloat and was fantastic. And then after she was done with him, she tore into me. Among many choice things she said that I might claim that I was too busy to get to finish all of my work duties. But really, she was carrying all of the load for the office. After the call was over she came out, sweetly asked me about my weekend, then oh so casually asked me if I had spoken to TGLC since Friday. Not fun times. She also suddenly started picking up a ton of the work, which she has been leaving me to handle solo since TGLC left. She tried to subtly grill me about TGLC throughout the rest of the day, also. I finally emailed my HR rep and said that she was asking me a lot of questions some of them pretty weird, and I thought that she might know or suspect that I had been talking to HR, to which the rep replied that she would have no way of knowing or suspecting that, that the rep was going to have a conversation with the regional VP next, and that it was all being handled. 
Meanwhile, my boss started blowing up TGLC phone as soon as the workday ended, and picked back up again at 8 a.m. the next day. He did not answer or respond to any of her texts. The next day, Wednesday, boss was already in when I got there, which was freakish. She is never in before about 20 minutes 30 minutes after we open unless the regional VP is in town. And even then she usually isn't in before anyone else. My boss continued trying to cover most of the office work, but also kept slipping out for weird and easily found to be fake reasons, although I didn't find out why until Thursday, when I came in early and the maintenance supervisor pulled me aside to tell me that my boss kept hunting him down and grilling him, even at the end of the day when he was clocked out and trying to go to his apartment, about me. Did I seem weird? Was I mad at her? Did he think that I disliked her? What was I up to when she wasn't around? And so on. And then when my boss actually came and she kept asking me all sorts of strange small talk questions. Paraphrased, how old is your dog? Eight years, how sad, he'll probably die soon, talk to TGLC lately. She was just being bizarre and really freaking me out. So, I loosened the plug on the secret microphone that she has up behind my desk while she was at lunch, because this has been going on for forever and I am sick to death of being under a microscope and it just has to stop. The recording me just has to stop. And when she came back in from her break, she made a beeline for the plug, first having to wiggle in between the wall and my desk, and plugged it back in. So I emailed my HR rep, because it has been three weeks since I went to her about this and I am still under constant surveillance and it is not okay. Here is the response I received. I will be asking her to remove the cameras tomorrow. I investigated further and learned the audio is not always on therefore she is not listening to your conversations at all times. I understand this can be uncomfortable therefore we will be asking her to remove the cameras. All managers are currently at a conference since yesterday so I have not been able to call her. Thank you. And I just lost it, guys. I mean, I'm obviously glad that the cameras and microphones will be going. But one, they are on whenever she is not in the office, and two, even if they weren't, what difference would it make if she were secretly recording me for a few hours every other day instead of constantly? Also, even though my state has one party consent, that one party needs to be present. She's not present when those things are on, and it sounds like telling her to take down her toys will be the only thing to happen so, vengeance will probably be on her mind. On the plus side, I also got an email from the hiring manager for that job at local big university saying that they would be making their final hiring decision at the end of the week, so, today I guess, and would be letting everyone who interviewed know their decision. On the minus side, it doesn't sound like any of my references have been contacted, but I'm off today because I worked last Saturday, so I'll be doing another application roundup, because I do not know how I am going to make myself go back to that place on Monday. Update. Hello from the Helmuth, lovely people. It has been quite the week. Getting the saddest. For me, news out of the way first. I got a rejection letter for the position at local big university. But while I am bummed, I have not had a great deal of time to reflect on it. Because I literally received the email at the exact moment that Hell Boss was terminated. Yes, terminated. You read that correctly. So, you know, like I said, it's been quite the week. Have a happy Friday, everyone. Just kidding. Not about Hell Boss being terminated. Just about leaving everyone here who has been so kind and supportive about the whole hell boss situation in the dark about how this miracle occurred. You definitely deserve to know how it went down. If the defeat of an IRL villain is something that will be of interest to you, please read on. If you have come across any previous Helmuth updates, you probably know about Hellboss and her awful Hellboss ways. You might know about the continuous ransacking and or rearranging of my desk any time that I was out and about the hidden microphones and cameras around the general office, and in my specific office. You might also know that things have been getting increasingly weird, terrible, and that I finally was able to go to HR a few weeks ago, but it was increasingly looking like nothing was going to happen other than my vengeful boss probably knowing that the only person left in her office reported her to HR. Well, on Monday I came in and the cameras and microphones were all magically gone and my boss kept beaming and hand to flying spaghetti monster trilling like a Disney princess whenever she spoke to me and not one of the sassy ones think like snow white levels of trilling and she was grabbing work from me and saying things like here let me take this you seem overloaded hey let me take over this move in for you I will electronically send out this lease and all manner of sentences the likes of which I have never heard her utter let alone while full on twinkling at me 
It was utterly bizarre and so far out of character that it actually made me kind of anxious. The super bestie sorority buddies act continued until I left for lunch, and so I thought to myself, well, I guess HR did have a talk with her, and now she'll probably be disconcertingly nice to me for a few weeks before she finds a way to punish me. And then I came back from lunch, and everything was completely different again. Awesome Temp was on the phone with a resident when I walked back into the office and kept desperately trying to mouth something to me about my boss being on the phone the entire time that I was gone. And then suddenly my boss emerged from the office, but was no longer making eye contact and was looking kind of vacant, I guess, and seemed intent on not speaking to me. Then a tour came in and I had to leave the office before it could slip me any further detail and by the time I got back she was leaving for lunch. As soon as it was out of the door, my boss disappeared for about half an hour before coming and looking extremely angry and wordlessly locking her office door before spitting out that she was going to lunch. So, clearly we were no longer BFF. About 10 minutes before she returned from her lunch break, one hour on the dot, another thing that had never happened before. The maintenance supervisor came by to say that he had overheard her talking on the phone to HR and that what he heard seemed very strange. Three minutes before her return an email from my HR rep landed in my inbox, asking a weird question about a particularly crazy incident that I had documented and submitted along with everything else, short version, and hold on to your butt for this one. She sued former employees from a company that she got fired from for plotting against her and going to HR and ultimately causing her termination, and forced me to accompany her to court on the clock and also tried to make me take the stand and perjure myself to help her case, and asking if I could speak to her for a few minutes that afternoon so she could update me on the closing of the case. As I was sending my answers off to my HR rep, no, there were no eviction files for my property in the room where the judge sequestered me before dismissing me. It wasn't even the location where we file for evictions. Yes, I could call her when I went to walk vacant apartments in a few minutes. My HR rep called my cell phone just as my boss came stomping in and, without a word, slammed her door and locked herself into her office. I surreptitiously checked my voicemail and heard my HR rep say something about needing to ask me a question and update me on the status of the case before apologizing profusely for calling me on my day off, and saying that she had sent an email to my work email before remembering that I wasn't there. Since there was no reason to think that I would be off of work, and a lot of distressing slamming sounds were coming from my boss's office, I figured I had probably call her back pretty quickly to figure out what the heck was going on. I grabbed the golf cart keys, headed out for the vacant apartment furthest from the office, and dialed her up, only to immediately be interrogated about whether I was really at work today. Had I been at work all day? Had I maybe just come in unexpectedly? And did I know that my boss had told the HR rep that she was working all alone all day? HR rep was extremely distressed and couldn't figure out why my boss would indicate I was off, but eventually moved on to her questions about the court day, followed by questions about any weird behavior that my boss might be exhibiting. So I answered her questions, told her about the sudden shift to unpleasantness and locking herself in her office, and the weird slamming sounds, and then nearly fell over when the HR rep told me one. My boss was going to be fired sometime between then and today. Two, my boss did not know this was going to happen. But three, she knew it was a possibility. So four, I needed to call or text my HR rep immediately if she approached me about anything. She told me that my boss had made many provably dishonest statements and has also been dishonest about the good leasing consultant, who also talked to HR after giving his notice and leaving, and about several issues involving me, and that our names had never been used when talking to my boss and she hopefully would not know that we had reported her to HR. As soon as we got off of the phone, I received a text message from it. My boss had yelled that she would be right back, run out of the office, jumped into some lady's car, and sped off. I immediately headed back to the office and discovered my boss and her friend, former assistant from a few jobs and years back crouched in a running SUV parked next to the model apartment. Don't ask what they were doing, I have no idea. I just know they were there for about half an hour before my boss wandered back into the office and locked herself into her office again, only opening the door when the maintenance supervisor or I knocked on it with specific work questions, until 6, which is when she came out and kind of kicked me out of the office. This morning when I got in, she was already there, and was, well, pretty unpleasant. She seemed to relax a little when no one from corporate strolled into can her, but then the phone rang. Caller ID revealed that it was our HR rep, and she snatched up her phone and slammed her door in one movement. We heard her go yes, okay, I understand, I understand, and we clearly heard a phone slam, then some light rustling. 
The door opened and she came out and locked it, purse and desk ledger in hand, turned to me and hissed Caroline, and waited a beat for me to make eye contact. Never contact me again. And off she stomped, right out of the door. It really was like a mini scene with Joan Collins in an AUG episode of Dynasty, except I didn't get slapped or thrown into a fountain and neither of us were wearing turbans. Of course, she immediately called each member of the maintenance team and told them that the mother of curs in the office got her fired, because she is nothing but classy and also clearly a very wrong party. But if you've made it this far for whatever reason, can we talk a minute about my new nickname, the mother of seeker, because it's really growing on me. I want to use it to sign all of my correspondence moving forward. Picture it. Sincerely, the mother of Kerr fondest regards. The mother of C. Kerr kisses. The mother of C. Kerr it really tickles me. I think I should embrace this new persona. So, since then it has been a whirlwind. I'm sure it's a huge surprise to learn that Hellboss was actually awful at her job and that terrible mistakes and mishandled issues and chaos have all been popping up ever since she walked out of the door. Corporate did send in a foster boss for the week who is lovely, but no one knows who will be here next week, or when, and I'm just kind of desperately trying to hold the office together. But guys, it is still 1000% better than having Hellboss here. Update, hi there from the Helmuths. So, I was thinking that, now that Hellboss is gone, the only things I would really have to write about this week would be the craziness of covering four positions, basically having over 20 hours of work per day, and trying to squeeze it into 8 hours, some resident craziness, and maybe some fun animal stories. Instead, so many high drama things happen that I'm hesitant to even list them because it legit sounds made up, not believable. But hey, why start holding out on you now, right? So, here are the things that have happened this week. A shooting. Someone on my property got shot in the middle of the night. I came into work to find the horrible maintenance supervisor laughing about it. The residents are all very upset. I am very upset. I am more dedicated than ever to finding a way to GTFO. Our make ready guy has not actually been making apartments ready, and three apartments that were supposed to be moved into were garbage on the day of move and so I made a big deal about this to our visiting corporate overlords, and the make ready guy and the maintenance supervisor seemed really peed about this. I made this observation out loud in the office, and then I went on my lunch break and received a threatening screaming phone call on my personal cell phone from the maintenance supervisor about talking about him behind his back and how he was calling me to leave out of it. Hell no. I told him the call was inappropriate and never to call my number again, called said corporate overlords, and said I was not okay with what had just happened and would not return to work until I had spoken with them in depth about the incident. This led to a meeting with both the regional VP and the garbage maintenance supervisor the next day wherein he started yelling and accusing me of being a long-term problem who does nothing but sit on my butt and gossip about people behind their back which, I mean, no, I do not, and also who am I supposedly gossiping with I am all alone there is literally no one I could talk to anyway. I wish I had remained calm when he got all red-faced and started saying crazy stuff, but I did wind up also raising my voice because I was surprised and also because I am over it. I told him, in front of the VP, that I need a professional environment where he does not yell, seem threatening. Call me to yell at me on my phone, tell disgusting explicit stories in front of me, and the like. And while the VP did admonish me and tell me that I will have to remain calm and be able to communicate professionally with Jackass Maji, she also asked some further questions about the explicit stories and I think my days of having to hear that guy tell me about working for women who don't wear underwear and smile at him without using their mouths is finally at an end. But who cares because no matter what I will shortly GTFO. Oh, that same maintenance supervisor seems to be in constant contact with Hellboss and McGruff the also recently fired, and they seem to be plotting ways to make like unpleasant for me. Super mature, super fun, but I giveth none of the cares because come hell or high water I will shortly GTFO. Oh, and I have been getting non-stop calls on my work line from some weird number that Google indicates is used by some fraudulent phishing scam. They keep asking for me by name, and the timing seems kind of weird so, maybe it's just me being paranoid, but I kind of suspect Hellboss having something to do with it. But it won't be a problem for me anymore once I GTFO, which I am intending to do with great haste. Apparently the regional VP thought I would be working 6 days a week until more people are hired, but nope. So today is my off day, since I am the only person who can cover set is because I am the only actual employee. Poor awesome temp has been left all alone on the helmet today. I feel terrible about that, but I'm still staying home and applying to any job at all, all of the jobs. I am leaving this place, leaving, leaving, leaving. 
There is no longer a question about notice, either. Nope. 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 I am out. I'm getting closer to having enough money socked away to just bail if I don't get a break on the job hunt soon. And I also have a really promising particular job lead. And the second one of those becomes a concrete option I am gone. So many caps, but so heartfelt, guys. Update. The briefest of hellos from the Helmuth. It is monthly close out and three people are trying to move in without having let us know they were coming and things are a touch hectic. So I can't do any real updating until after work. But I just found out that a bunch of regional VPs and the company president all gave notice at the same time. That's weird, right? Apparently everyone remaining is insisting that is a coincidence. But that seems odd. Although it certainly explains why everything surrounding the way the property has been handled since Hellboss was let go has been a bit disorganized. I briefly wondered if I should be worried, but then remembered that I am already worried all of the time anyway. Then I went back to desperately trying to keep the wheels on the metaphorical hell bus. Luo. Update. Freedom. Hello from not the H-E-L-L-M-O-U-T-H, my friends. That's right. I am. Free. I was offered the leasing position at the fancy new property on Monday, and I immediately accepted it, gave notice, and then shortened my notice. It's a big pay cut, but not as big as I was afraid of, and it will pay the bills while I keep looking. Interviewing for non-property management jobs, and in one to two weeks I should know if I made it to the top three for that state position that I am still very excited about. H-U-Z-Z-I-H. I am still out running errands, refreshing my interview wardrobe slightly, heading to the salon so I have a fresh do when I start the new job divided by etc. etc. But I will update with fun last week on the Helmuth details and new job fears later today. However, I would like to invite you all to join me in my all-day dance party. It's a legitimate dance party. Guys, I have actually been dancing my way through my errands like a crazy person because I have finally escaped the worst job I've ever had, like, two days before I hit the one-year mark there. Fizzy beverage of choice for all. Update. This was sent as a letter to Om two years later. The last time I sent in an update I was still at the helm of. It was becoming increasingly obvious that my manager was actually a lying jerk, and she was also setting up secret video and audio surveillance in my personal office. Weird disasters and unusual phenomena were still occurring pretty regularly. Residents were still being extra horrible, and I was applying and interviewing my heart out anywhere that sounded halfway decent. Well, things wound up getting much worse before they got better and it took a really long time, but spoiler, I got out. Things got truly bonkers before that happened, though. I posted about it pretty regularly in the Friday open threads. An awesome commenter rounded up a huge chunk of those threads here if anyone is interested in watching me slowly lose my sanity. My manager went completely off of the deep end. In addition to planting hidden microphones and cameras all over the place, mostly in my office, she did all kinds of truly out there stuff, such as taking checks out of my money bag and trying to hide them so she could write me up for not processing them, telling staff members that she needed them for a project on property before putting them in her vehicle, and then driving them off property without their consent in order to interrogate them, declaring a war on the children on property, declaring a very problematic war on people wearing hoodies, who all happened to be POC, but that's okay, because my awesome leasing consultant got another job and agreed to go to HR and verify everything if I wanted to make a complaint. And, well, I very much wanted to go and make a complaint. I wound up sending them all kinds of documentation, the timeline for the hidden check thing, photos of all of the surveillance items, dates and files for shady things that she did with resident accounts, in-depth and verifiable accounts of her doing shady things to employees, Proof of payroll fraud, just, a lot. And after three weeks of waiting for something to happen, I finally sent an email saying I was still being recorded without permission and I needed it to be dealt with immediately. Well, suddenly the cameras came down and the atmosphere at work got very weird and then Hellboss was epically fired. Once Hellboss was gone, there was at least no one actively trying to destroy me. Although we did have a flood of bad online reviews from fake residents that were definitely her. Every single one of them included high praise for her and talked about how terrible everything was now that she was gone. It was still pretty awful, though, and I had to do the work of the manager and two leasing consultants in addition to all of the assistant manager duties, and still had to work every weekend. Plus there were still wasp situations, giant snakes slithering through the office, non-poisonous but still, alarming, and scary resident situations, teeny tiny sampling. Someone got shot on the property, there was an unrelated car chase through the property when another resident fled the scene of a hit, and run, etc. because of course they did. 
although I was very grateful for the awesome temp I had in the office, we still text occasionally. She is just a terrific person, and I did get a foster boss who came in from a neighboring state for a few days every two weeks or so who was great. She became an excellent reference for me. Working there was still the stuff that fuels nightmares. Also, shortly after Hellboss was vanquished from the property we learned that the property management side of our company was going to cease to exist in very short order, and all properties would be taken over by a new management company once they lined one up. So yeah, I finally got the hell out of there. It turns out company I work for will cease to exist by the end of the month goes a long way towards making leaving a job before you've been there a year look a lot less flaky. So, uh, thanks, Helmuth Overlords, I guess. I took an interim job as a leasing consultant, a step down in pay and position, but also in responsibilities, which I really needed at that point, at a luxury property while I continued to look for a way out of property management and cooled my heels while waiting through the lengthy process of interviewing for positions with state government agencies. It was a really nice break, recovery period with a kind manager and pleasant co-workers, and the worst things I dealt with were jerks trying to force their way into the office an hour before opening, rich people being ridiculous, and rich white dudes finding a way to casually mention how much money they made or name drop famous or influential people they knew every time I had to tell them no or explain why I couldn't do what they wanted. Child's play, y'all. I found my in with a mildly dysfunctional but friendly state agency as an upper-level admin, HR liaison before I was even at that job long enough to need to put it on my resume. After being at the new job for about a year and a half, I got a call from one of the HR people who had helped train me back when I started. She had left to work for another state agency's HR department as a manager, had an HR analyst position open up on her team and wanted me to apply. Since moving into HR had been my ultimate goal since I left the Helmuth I jumped at the chance. I secured the job, moved on over, and have been here for about three months now. I'm making better money than I did at the Helmuth. Everyone on my team is friendly and helpful, and making sure my training is going well. My boss is incredibly supportive and kind, and I've lucked into an agency that is super funded and has a lot of extra perks. The work is very challenging and I still have a great deal to learn, but I really like it. And once I've been here for a year I will qualify for a tuition reimbursement program, and my boss has already told me that she'll approve me for it so I can get a master's degree in HR. Hore, I am never leaving. I have seen Hellboss exactly one time since her dramatic exit, but immediately ran and hid so she didn't see me. I do not regret this. I will do it again. I was worried about a frivolous lawsuit from her, but COVID shut down everything at about the time she would have hit the deadline for filing and I guess she had other things on her mind. She is apparently now working at a local property management company as a regional manager, which is a big upgrade from a property manager. No idea how she managed that but I'm not surprised as she always seems to land on her feet.